our reality can be viewed in many different ways. You can describe it, you can draw it, you can echolocation to reflect it. But at the end of the day, all these methods are a projection of the world and the system like humans, bats, or even AIs that learns from these modalities which they were given to build an inner representation of the world in order to interact with it and do things as basic as walking. So here comes the grand question. Since intelligence is mostly about building an inner representation of our reality, then as its capability increases, would all intellectual beings end up with the same inner representation, which should also be optimal at the same time? As mentioned in a paper called the Platonic Representation Hypothesis that was released a few weeks ago, the author suggested that the convergence of this inner representation that would also become the optimal function of intelligence is called the Platonic Representation, referencing Plato in his ideal world, which we'll get to later. The authors hypothesized that neural networks that are trained with different objectives on different data and modalities are converging to a shared statistical model of reality in their representation spaces. To put that simply, the relations the models build between the abstract concepts always ends up very similarly, even if the models are trained on different modalities. And they have found some pretty convincing evidence for this in the current foundation models. But before we go down this theoretical rabbit hole, the reality now is that we are still stuck in a very terrible job market state, right? I struggled to find a job, which ended up having me making videos right now. And even people online are sharing that they had to drop thousands of applications just to land on one job too. So this is a perfect time for me to introduce you to this AI for Job Seekers playbook by HubSpot, which helps you streamline your job hunt and save you some precious time by providing you some amazing resources in your job hunt endeavor. From providing you with a collection of free resources about job related tools and websites to a 20 page guide that shows you how to use ChatGPT efficiently during your job search, they got you covered. My favorite content they provide for free is definitely the juicy resources they got in their 20 AI powered tools for job seekers, where it has a collection of useful websites that contains great job references for me to go and explore. And on the non AI related side, they also provide a variety of different resume templates, resume guides, cover letter templates, interview tips, job application tracker templates, and a collection of common interview questions. So if you're ready to take control of your job search and save time, I recommend you check out the link in the description to access this free resource. This playbook was created by HubSpot and thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, in order for us to really understand the evidence in this paper, first we have to make sense of how they are measuring these representations as they are used to prove similarity between the inner representations of the models. For example, let's say we have two foundation models, one is an LM and the other is a vision model. We then measure the distance between the input text, apple and orange in the representation space of LLM and measure the distance between the concept of an apple and an orange in the representation space of the vision model. Then they say these two models are aligned if the measured distances are roughly the same in both of the models. Well, of course, this is a simplified explanation. You can refer to the code to see exactly how they have done it. And so they use this method to test if representations in different models with different modalities are converging, which they found out that as all model sizes increase, there is indeed a sign of convergence as seen in this diagram. On the y-axis, you can see the models are plotted in terms of their performance. In this case, it's hella swag, which is a common sense benchmark. On the x-axis, it is showing the alignment value with Dino V2, which is a vision model. The data points then go from Bloom 560 million parameters all the way to Llama 370B. So this tells us that with an increased performance, there is an alignment between a pure language model and a pure vision model with a strong linear relationship. On the other hand, when models are sorted by the math benchmark, it shows more of an exponential relation, which is also fascinating to see. This could mean that math doesn't really mean much in the representation space of the model, and common sense might have a stronger impact in building representations and relations within a model. Here's another diagram of theirs showing different sizes of Dino V2 have the same relation trends, and look at how the correlation is very consistent throughout, which kind of shows that it's not really a coincidence. So these observations can mean a lot of things. Let me break it down. The first big question is, why are representations aligning and looking like they are converging? As LLMs get better at language modeling, they have shown in the evidence that the representations and learns are more and more aligned with vision models, and it is also the same the other way around. But in hindsight, it's text and images. They shouldn't have anything in common, right? How are the representations they built similar? The authors argue that as the amount of tasks a model needs to solve increases, their 
there would be a multitasking pressure generated that there would be less and less representations in the function space that would satisfy all the demands at once. So they propose the multitask scaling hypothesis, which states that as models become more general purpose, they would need more and more specific functions to accurately predict the desired outcome, and we should expect fewer and fewer possible solutions. So as we want more general purpose models, it then points to the obvious that scale is all we need. This is similar to a concept proposed in a 2021 paper called the Contravariance Principle, where it states that the more tasks we must solve, the fewer functions satisfy them all. So the second big question is, what representations are we converging to? Well, this is probably too early to say, as this is definitely a starting point of a grand theory, and a lot of assumptions have been made throughout. But there are signs that point to it for sure. Isn't it kind of cool that they were able to show a pure LLM in a pure vision model that they have extremely similar organization of colors in the representation space, even though the language model has never seen the actual colors. So maybe reaching this platonic representation is the end goal for AI or even intelligence in general, which brings us to the point, how would we get there? Building representation requires data, so we just need more data, right? But what types of data do we need? And actually, it doesn't matter. The paper suggested the idea that as all data sets expand, it would all slowly become the same data set, which is just the data set of our reality. Then if we train a model with large enough capacity, we will get a function that reaches a platonic representation and it contains the most compressed version of our reality. Some may call this God, some may call this assimilation, some may call this the peak of intellectual beings. I think the name Bob would sound pretty good. Oh my god, it's Bob, the peak of intelligence. So the moral of the story is data set is all we need. Well, realistically, yes and no. From what we talked about so far, it does show that any architecture that makes sense would bring us to the platonic representation. But unfortunately, we don't have infinite time and compute. We would still need to find the architecture that would get us there efficiently. Think of it like this. In a fabricated scenario, things like Mamba or XLSTM might be better at making representations, but transformers are just more efficiently implemented on hardware, which means it'll still learn the representation faster. So hardware needs to be compatible with the architectures, which is also the reason why there's no correct architecture to use and researching what other architectures would work is also an important aspect, as there is always a trade-off that we need to balance. Another important takeaway from this paper, which is also more applicable now, is that models perform better when it is trained in multimodalities. As even the most absurd modality would help than not having that one extra. This has been proven in various other research, like who knew having a robotics model to auto-regressively generate text would help improve its performance, and the same thing happened for protein folding too. But anyways, what did this old man has to do with this hypothesis? Back in 375 BC, Plato had this idea of an ideal reality that underlies our sensations. Plato's cave describes that we humans are prisoners chained in a cave, only able to see shadows cast on a wall by objects behind them, representing how humans perceive reality through some imperfect sensory experiences. Then, one prisoner escapes and discovers the outside world, realizing the shadows were mere illusions and gaining true knowledge of the world. And in this research case, the author draws similarity to Plato's idea where platonic representation would refer to the true knowledge, and we humans are using the shadows on the wall to create an AI model that would be able to recover better representations of the actual world outside the cave. So to summarize, this paper gave evidence that the current foundational models and their representations are all converging. And it would make sense that when the model size and the data set are sufficient, all the representations would eventually become optimal and identical, which they propose as the platonic representation thanks to the effect of the multitask scaling hypothesis. Whether this would help us get to AGI or would humans assimilate with that knowledge is a debate for another day. And with this hypothesis having major flaws with an incredible amount of assumptions, I will give it a 10 out of 10 on my cope meter, but this is definitely still fun to debate and explore. Congratulations! You have been tricked by an LM interpretability paper into practicing philosophy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and while you're still here, if you liked the video today, you should definitely check out my newsletter where we break down the 
top research papers weekly with the goal of making it easy to read, fast to digest, and straight to the point. As I might not have enough time to cover all of the incredible papers that are coming out with my videos, this is a great alternative for you if you want to stay up to date with the latest research breakthroughs. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Lischelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex Che, Deegan, Alex Maries, Miguelim, Fafal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.